All right, kids, we're trying to put the garden to sleep for the winter. And um, this here plant, you all should know what this plant is. Recognize that? Yeah, this is the okra. Uh, and uh, what we're going to do is we're going to chop it up into small pieces. And that way, it'll break down. If you just have these big old pieces laying on the ground, they'll still be here in the spring. But if we chop it up, uh, it'll, it'll decompose over the winter, we hope. Chopping up the okra. So the other task we're going to do in the garden here is get these tomatoes out. They've been growing for many months now and you can see they're totally dead. They really don't like the cold. And we're going to, they're on a trellis. So we've got to take all this trellising off the twine, get the vines cut out, pull the T-posts out. That way we'll have a clear bed ready to plant in the spring. And then same with these cucumbers. This is a cucumber trellis. Not much to clear here. We'll just get all these stakes out, get the trellises down and put away. And then we can get all these beds mulched and ready for the spring. Okay, well here uh, is where we had some of our um, winter squash. And what else do we have in here? We had corn, corn watermelon, watermelons. Yeah, it's a mess right now. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna mow this and that'll chop everything up and uh, make it all lay flat. And then we're gonna cover it with a tarp, um, this black plastic tarp. And um, the sun will hit that over the winter and kind of warm things up underneath and speed up the decomposition and also keep any other weeds that might want to come up in the early spring from coming up. And then when we pull that tarp back in the spring, we'll have a nice fresh area to plant new stuff. Okay, anybody know what this is? Give you a clue. One of the three little pigs built a house out of it. Straw, that's right. But we like to use it in our garden to lay down as mulch on some of these beds. Here you see a bed that, unlike some of the other beds we show you, doesn't have anything growing in it right now to speak of. And um, we're going to cover this bed with straw. Think of the straw as a blanket that protects this bed in the winter. Not that the bed, uh, we're worried about the bed getting too cold. It's not that kind of protection. But if you look in nature, you will notice that you almost never see bare ground. So there we have it. We have our blanket of straw covering our bed and it should be nice and cozy for the winter. And in the spring, We'll pull back the blanket and we'll start planting stuff all over again. Um, I wanted to say something else about nature and bare soil. You know, once in a while there's an event in nature and soil gets bared. Like for example, if a tree falls over and the roots are exposed and there's bare soil there, what happens to that bare dirt? Pretty quickly, things start growing in it. We call them weeds if we, they're, if we don't want them, but, um, Fast growing annual plants, weeds, have a very important role in nature. They will cover up bare soil really quickly and hold it in place. And so it's just, I think, I liken it to sort of putting a band aid on a cut. So the weeds come up, they cover the bare soil, they protect it from further erosion. Okay, kids, so we've talked about putting the bed gardens to bed for the winter. Here is a, uh, a garden bed that is going to be awake through the most through the least at least the next month or so anyway these plants can tolerate cool weather these are collards and those are brussels sprouts you see the little round cabbagey things yeah and in a few weeks they're going to be nice and plump and big and ready to harvest uh, but we do need to protect them if it gets really cold and so we have this stuff here this uh row cover well here is a bed cover in this case but it lets sunlight through but 
it protects and lets water through too if it rains but it protects the plants so if it's 20 you know 8 degrees at night it might stay 35 in there and that's just enough temperature difference to keep them going through cold cold winter nights so um, it can get down the teens even and if we have this cover on um, they'll be protected so it's a nice warm down blanket for our our collards and our Brussels sprouts. Under here, I'll just give you a little peek. We have our lettuce. It's looking good. Sandbags, and they don't blow away. Here's a little quiz. Well, cool weather crops. We've named a bunch of them over the over these videos. And anybody think of what might be in here? A crop that likes cool weather. I would I would fall over if anybody guessed this. No one's gonna guess this. But anyway, it begins with a C. One, two, three. Cabbage. And those cabbages are looking really nice. That one's probably almost ready to harvest. But we can let them sit there. One thing about cabbages, they can sit there and just wait until you're ready to eat them. The rest of the cabbages didn't get covered. They're not nearly so big, are they? This bed. Hello, carrots. We could probably get away with not having these covered, but if it gets really, really cold, the carrots that are underground, if they freeze, then it's all over. But last but not least, begins with a B. Five letters. Fourth letter is a T. Second and third letter are the same. Anybody say beets? Can I hear beets? Yay! There you have our beets. And look at that, will you? There's a nice looking beet right there. Just, uh, and like the carrots, we can let them just sit in here. We'll have to do a beet recipe for you guys sometime in the next month or so. Okay. So we also have a permanent place to grow things that like warmer weather, generally. And in the winter, this is a really nice place to grow things that, well, they could be outside, being in here because it's warm they'll grow faster and we can plant them later so that in late winter January February going into March we'll have something to harvest whereas the things in the raised beds they might be petering out and might not be as good to eat so Mark if we wanted to could we harvest things from our garden year-round and never ever stop yeah here yeah. in Virginia yeah. I think we could yeah yeah in a lot of the country you can actually so in here, we have recently just seeded a bunch of things. And from afar, they don't look like much. But if we zoom in, we can see here we got some carrots coming up. Little baby carrot plants. Well, they got a long way to go. <laughs> we have, let's see, some salad greens. It's called Mizuna. In here. We've got some arugula. Another salad green. We have cilantro, delicious herb. You can see they're just little babies, but give them a few weeks and they'll be. They've got some radishes. Those are the biggest thing we have in here right now, the radishes. Uh -huh. We have beets oh. starting to come up. We have some Asian uh, pak choy that was seeded a while ago, but the chickens ate most of it. But these are the survivors. <laughs> So those will actually be ready soon. You can see they're just kind of hanging on. I almost gave up on them, but they've made it through. A bunch more beets, and then this is all lettuce, these little babies here. So, while it doesn't look like much now, come end of January, this is gonna be chock full of vegetables. And January, February, March, we'll be eating all kinds of fresh, ve fresh vegetables. And right at the same time, we'll be seeding back outside. So our garden won't stop. It'll just keep going. That's great. And when you say we'll be eating vegetables, who is the we, Mark? Oh, 
hopefully all of us. Okay. Mr. Martin and I and the kids, hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Looking forward to that. All righty. Hello, carrots. There you have our beats. And look at that, will you? There's a nice looking beat right there. <laughs>